Good evening. I'd like to call this council meeting to, to order at 10 minutes after 7. It's May the 21st. Uh, first of all, we'll be led by invocation, led by uh, Tracy C. Johnson from the Murphy Chapel, uh, St. Paul's AME Church. And then our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Adam Valenita, if I pronounce it right. So, uh, if, if you please come up. If we have our invocation first, but everybody please stand. Please, please speak into the mic. We can't hear you. Thank you. Father God Almighty, we thank you for all that are in attendance tonight. We have special blessings for our mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and all the council members. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the wonderful work that they're doing. Father, we thank you for the wonderful weather that we're having. We just have special blessings for all those that are in attendance. May this meeting be done decently and in order. Father, we ask special blessings for our president and our White House and all the cabinet members, all the leaders, Father, that have choice over us, Father. Father, we ask special blessing for our children as they attend school. Keep them safe, Father. Keep them safe. Bless the sick and the shut in, Father. Oh, Father, with these things we ask in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Give him a mic, please. Oh, I can read it. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Castellanos. Here. Councilwoman Lopez Viado. Present. Councilmember Shoemaker. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Wu. Here. Mayor Johnson. Here. Uh, now we have one presentation I'd like to come down and present. I, I do have a report out of closed session. That's all right. Mr. City Attorney, will you please report out of closed session? Please. I would be happy to. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, there is one announcement that I have. Uh, as the public is aware, the United States Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals recently issued its decision in Martin versus City of Boise. The panel held that the cruel and unusual punishments clause of the Eighth Amendment precluded the enforcement of a statute prohibiting sleeping outside against homeless individuals with no access to alternative shelter. The panel held that as long as there is no option of sleeping indoors, the government cannot criminalize indigent homeless people for sleeping outdoors on public property on the false premise that they had a choice in the matter. In closed session today on a vote of four to zero, council member Wu absent, the city council authorized the city attorney's office in conjunction with other California cities to file a friend of the court brief, an amicus brief, in support of the city of Boise's petition for writ of certiorari to encourage the United States Supreme Court to hear the case and issue a revised decision. I have nothing further to report. Thank you, uh, Mr. City Manager. Do you have any changes to the agenda tonight? No, thank you. Okay, now I'll do the presentation. Now it's on. Okay. First of all, Ashley, we have a city of resolution for commendation for present to Ashley, you know, for the years and service that you spent on the community service and as a planning commissioner. Uh, the city council is very proud to give you this resolution of commendation for yourself. And we would hope that you would say, you know, say a few words for us, you know, because you spent some years here and let us know your feelings. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Council and Mayor, for this um, recognition. Um, I grew up in these council chambers. Uh, the first city council meeting I spoke at, I was eight years old. And anyone who knows me knows that I'm not shy to be outspoken. 
Um, so it was really nice to come full circle. I want to thank um, the late Mike Spence because I was his appointed human resources commissioner for several years. And then just recently I was able to serve on the planning commission for a brief stint. So um, I wanna thank him for believing in me. Um, and I also wanna thank my mom for always supporting me and everyone else that's here. Um, it was an honor to be able to give back to my community and I look forward to doing that in other ways. So thank you so much. And we are very proud of you and thank you for serving. Thank you. Next is oil communications. We have quite a few cards tonight, so I am going to limit the time to three minutes instead of five. And, you know, and I hope we all understand. I know we don't want to be here for an, an hour and a half to two hours speaking on oil communications. So, but please, also, I know a lot of you are very passionate about what you might want to talk about tonight, but please address all your comments to the chair instead of a certain council members, because the chair does run the meetings, and please address them to the chair. I would sure appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, now we have the first. Uh, um, and, and I just want to make sure that the rest of the council is okay with that direction to save time. Is that acceptable? Yep. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, let me just announce that we're out of speaker cards this evening. So if you'd like to speak, you can fill out an agenda item position slip and just write on there, I wish to speak, and we'll still call you up. Um, I'm going to call three names at a time. If you could line up in the middle, please, starting with Jerry Fortuna, followed by Linda Nguyen, followed by Marie Thomas. Jerry Fortuna. Come forward, please. Ready to go? Good evening, Council. How's it going? Um, my name is Jerry Fortuna. I, my name is Jerry Fortuna. I've been a resident of West Covina for over 30 years. Born and raised, played basketball here, went to school here. My daughter still goes to school here. And the reason why I'm here tonight is because I want to speak on the whole St. Pauli situation. I work in sports entertainment now, and you know I love the city. I still live here, but I travel every day to downtown LA. Got to go do meetings in LA. Got to, you know, co cocktails over business talks in downtown LA. I'm tired of that. I would love for us to be able to have, you know, what come to West Covina. Let's meet somewhere besides Panera Bread. So, St. Paul's proposing, I think, is a great idea. I think that building a, you know, in a, it would either be a sports entertainment complex or it might be a a hotel, I think it's a great idea. We need that out here in West Covina. A lot of people drive to LA every day just to avoid this, what they call boring city. I love my city. I want our city to be more like, hey, let's go to West Covina. Let's go meet what they're doing over there. And that's that's pretty much what I want to talk about today. I think that if we give Simply a chance, they'll do a great job. Uh, they have a great track record of building great buildings. And I think that if they build something in West Covina, people will come out here. I want to create more revenue for the city. You know, I, I think we need that. <laughs> you know, I, I see the difference between now and the last 10 years, and we need the revenue base in our city. So I hope you guys are on board as well with that proposition from St. Pauli. But I think it's a great idea, and that's all I want to say for today. Thank you for your time. Hello, council members. I'm here to oppose the St. Pauli project. My concerns, I live with the man that's a chemist that works for the EPA. And you building five within 500 feet of toxic land is not something that I want for the city. I understand you want to build more revenue for the city. You want more profits to the city. How about we put that money towards rebuilding Glendora Avenue? 
How about we put more towards a mall that's pretty much gonna be non-existence in the, last, in the next five years or so? You're losing so many businesses, so many buildings that are already established. Why build a fancy hotel when there's one within a mile radius in City of Industry with the golf course? Why, because you wanna put a zip line, you wanna put a training facility for the firefighters, for the police officer? I know that was the whole intention of it. Why not put more into what we have right now? Why not clean up the city? We wanna speak about homelessness and everything that's been going on. I live behind the wash. I still see everything you guys do not see. I still hear everything you guys do not hear. So the city is not cleaning up with the homelessness. The police officers will approach them and then they'll come back two days later. I see four tents set up in the back. So as far as listening to the city and listening to your residents, the residents don't want this. We don't want more traffic going down Azusa and Amar. I have parents that love the city, that commute from Azusa and Amar to go to a school that, that has a dual program, that has an IB program. We're growing as a city right now. Why create more traffic? Because you want more profits, more revenue? And that's, that's exactly what it sounds like, profits and revenue, but why not put it to something that's already there? We built a great little restaurant that's been sitting empty for how many years now? Right there where Target is. The only businesses that are lasting are Target and Home Depot. So I really hope that you guys just put the money to something else, not building a hotel or another Santa Anita racetrack when there's already one in Santa Anita. The only reason why they're succeeding is because they don't have Dollar Trees or the projects off Cameron in California. Let's think about that. After Linda Nguyen, I'd like to call forward uh, uh, Paige. Please hold your uh, applause now, and it's gonna take us quite a while to get those. I sure appreciate it, thank you. I'd like to call forward Paige Gosney, followed by Heidi Freeman, followed by Phil Kaufman. Good evening. My name is Marie Thomas, and I have been a resident of West Covina since 1971. And I live about uh, a mile away from the BKK landfill. And I totally object to the building of a hotel there. I think risking the escape of toxic substances is a risk to our health. Please, I would appreciate it if you hold the applause down. Good evening, Heidi Freeman, 30 year resident. I'm here tonight to express how disappointing it is, how little this council has listened to the residents in the community on the future of the BKK site. First, the city and council ignored our request for a complete, fair and transparent request for proposal. Proposals were to be submitted within only 30 days, giving Singpoli, who's been working with the city for two and a half years, most of that time under an exclusive, exclusive negotiation agreement, an unfair advantage. Additionally, even though there were an additional three proposals, there was no objective selection criteria. And on top of that, in less than three business days, the announcement was made that the city council had, will proceed with the sale to Simpoli with absolutely no discussion for the public on how that decision was made. We're in the dark. Second, the council ignored the input the city itself solicited directly from residents on their desires for the BKK landfill. I've pulled some illuminating data from both of the city hall meetings. From the January 24th meeting, 52% of the respondents placed public amenities over revenue. From the January 30 meeting, 65% of the respondents voted for either open space and nature preserve, park recreational facilities, or leave it as is. Also from the January 30th meeting, 61% of the respondents would not support selling a portion of the site to a developer, even if it meant possible revenues for public amenities. Very clear, the residents are not in support of building a hotel. So we're here tonight facing a council that has willfully ignored the complexities of the site, conducted a suspect business deal, and ignored residents' desires. But you have a chance to fix this. 
do not sign that formal letter of intent with Singpole. Do a better job at representing us. Heidi Freeman? Oh, sorry. Phil Kaufman. <clears throat> Good evening. <clears throat> In his classic Civil Disobedience, originally published under the title Resistance to Civil Government, naturalist, writer, philosopher, and above all social activist, Henry David Thoreau wrote the following. There will never be a really free and enlightened state until the state comes to recognize the individual as a higher and independent power from which all its power and authority are derived and treats him accordingly. For about three years now, the individual residents of West Covina have attempted to use this power, their power, to let government know what they want. And as recently as this past January, at well-attended community meetings, individual residents of West Covina have overwhelmingly let government know that what they want is open, natural space to share with a wide array of indigenous wildlife and flora, with the only additional construction to be an unobtrusive and revenue-generating photovoltaic solar field built with zero penetration into the fragile ground, into land as toxic and as potentially, potentially volatile as any in this country. What the individuals or the residents of West Covina are saying is no massive construction, no additional traffic, no high volume of people working, living, and harming the land of putting the toxic site and surrounding area in jeopardy, no landfill hotel. I'd like to call forward Francois Colton, followed by Brian Jobst, followed by Carolyn Arndt. Hello, my name is Francoise. Um, I am just a three and a half year resident of West Covina. I love it here. However, um, I'm here to speak to all of you about the uh, BKK. Singpoli was selected um, to build. I'm just totally shocked and appalled still. It just, just makes me very angry that you guys agreed to, to allow Singpoli to build on this toxic site. I know the city is in a lot of debt, um, but by putting the residents in harm's way to get out of debt makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. I don't know, I, I just I have no idea how this came to be. So um, I'm here to say that you guys need to rethink, uh, not sign these documents. We should not be building on this incredibly toxic site. Um, all of you are basically representatives of the residents. The residents don't want it. Well, I don't know why you guys aren't listening, but you really need to, that's why you're here. So please do not build on this toxic site and cause injury and harm to residents. Thank you. Brian? I'm Brian Jobst. My wife Heidi and I are 30 year residents of West Covina. The BKK landfill, the majority of this city council has chosen money over public health, a hotel developer over its own residence, and ignorance over knowledge. Simply put, you have made it clear, a hotel developer is more important than your own residence. According to the latest US Census data, over 26,000 people live within one mile of BKK. You have sold them out to a promise from Singpoli, a promise for the possibility there might be some money for the city. According to the state of California, 26,000, excuse, excuse me, according to the latest US Census data, over 26,000 people live within one mile of BKK. 
according to the state of California, 71% of the population adjacent to BKK are disadvantaged communities. Disadvantaged communities based on factors such as pollution burden indicators, the number of children and elderly, educational attainment, and linguistic isolation. You have deliberately chosen to harm these people and put them at more risk. These are the people that most need your help and protection. BKK remains the largest toxic hazardous waste landfill in the state of California. It is number one. It remains one of the state's most dangerous landfills, containing 3.4 million tons of liquid toxic hazardous waste in a landfill that is completely unlined. You have elected to put a hotel right next to it. The hotel will be less than 500 feet from the presumed boundary of that landfill. The hotel itself will be built on land that's already known to be contaminated. That's reflected in the city's own records that I got from a public records request over two and a half years ago. None of you are stupid. I don't believe that for a minute. Unfortunately, that only brings me to one conclusion. You just don't care. After Carolyn Art, I'd like to call forward Therese Garcia, followed by Ray Edmondson, followed by Tracy Fu. Good evening to all of you, Carolyn Art. I've lived in West Covina since 1957. And that landfill was a dump. And if there is ever a name chosen for a hotel that you think is going to go there, it will be known to the West Covina residents as the BKK Landfill Hotel on or ant, you choose the preposition, the dump. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. That land has been laying feral for 20 plus years. It needs to continue to lay feral for at least that long and perhaps longer. We don't have a clue. We don't know what the future is, but we know that at the present time, it is not fit for anyone to spend time there. And you need to listen to the people who put you in office and you're shoving your nose at them. And it's time to stop. And it needs to stop soon, not later. Thank you. Therese Garcia. Good evening, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Therese Garcia. I'm a resident of West Covina. I've lived here for seven year, almost seven years. I'm married to a lifelong resident of West Covina. We own a home here. We own a small business here. My husband and I are both attorneys. We own and operate a law firm here, right here in West Covina, where we employ 16 people and we have helped hundreds of West Covina residents. I care deeply about this community, and I come here tonight because I oppose, like many of the other people in this room, the proposed development of the BKK landfill. I and everyone else I've talked to, and I'm hearing it loud and clear, we think it's a bad idea to build a resort hotel on land adjacent to a hazardous waste landfill. There are many valid arguments as to why it's a bad idea, but I'm gonna focus on two right now. One, public safety, and two, potential failure. One, public safety. Building adjacent to a landfill that is full of millions of tons of toxic sludge is not safe. We residents feel that it is not safe. If we are wrong, if we are naive, please show us. Please prove to us that it is perfectly safe to develop a multi-storied hotel structure with various amenities adjacent to millions of tons of toxic waste. Prove to us with concrete evidence that we are wrong in assuming that there is too much at stake here to consider this type of development. Four out of five of you already voted in favor of moving forward with their proposal. 
What evidence did you consider when you voted yes to building a resort hotel adjacent to this hazardous waste site? Did you listen to the residents who live within a few hundred feet of this site? Did you listen to your own appraiser who stated that the highest and best use of this land is as open space? Did you consult with neutral experts that's that not hired by the very developer that wants to get this pushed through? Are you waiting for the regulatory agencies to tell us it's not safe once it's too late, once our air, water, and soil has already been contaminated? Like how the state of California did in 1984 when they assured West Covina families living right near the BKK landfill that it was safe right up until the moment when they told them to evacuate due to an immediate threat of toxic gas? <laughs> Do not risk our health and safety in the name of maximizing revenue. Running a government is not the same as running a business. I know because I run one. You cannot simply balance a budget without considering the human consequence. We did not elect you so that you could sacrifice our health and safety in the name of profit. The second issue I want to address in, as quickly as possible is potential failure. Let me tell you really quickly about a story about a developer that had grand plans to develop a shopping plaza on former landfill land in 2006 outside of Cleveland, Ohio. The EPA approved it. Please, if I may, just a few more seconds. Okay. The, the, they planned to develop a Walmart. The Walmart built on that land, and after three years of operations, they closed. They abandoned that store. You know why? Because it started to sink. The gas, the methane gas seeped through the cracks. The water was polluted. And it actually literally began to sink. Okay, 10 seconds, I, I promise. So sink pulley, they don't care. They advertise on their website. This is their philosophy on their website. They maximize asset values despite problems or danger. Okay, please, okay, one, one, one more sentence. Please, council, consider the public health and safety above all else, please. This development is not safe. If it is, prove to us that it is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> excuse me. Ex I, I know, excuse me. I know everybody's passionate, but if this keeps up, I will take a recess. We will take a 10 minute recess and then we'll come back. So that's up to you. Please, let's get through this tonight. I know we're very, you're very passionate about what's going on, but show respect to everybody. You may not agree with the council. You may not agree with some of the decisions that are made, but please, we're setting up here listening to you. So please, let's listen to the residents are speaking. Let's get through this. Thank you. Hey, Ray Edmondson, uh, 30 years in West Covina. I've come and spoke on this issue a few times. Um, I know none of you are chemists. I am a chemist. This is a really stupid idea, guys. Don't do this. <laughs> Excuse me, next speaker is Tracy Fu, followed by Frederick Sykes, followed by Jerry Potras, followed by Suzanne Pickerling. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tracy Fu. I'm a, a City of Walnut resident, and this is my first time showing up at a city council meeting. And uh, I'm usually on the other side because I work for a neighboring city, and I understand the planning process pretty well. I think there are four things the city isn't, isn't doing very well. The first one is where is the environmental impact report. So according to the California Environmental Quality, uh, Quality Act, we are supposed to do an environmental impact report. Mm -hmm. And where is the notice of preparation? I don't see that. So that's the number one thing we're missing right there here. The number two thing I think is I've only heard about two community workshops so far. And myself is actually driving a 500 meeting project for another city. And we have conduct, <coughs> conducted six workshop meetings, one online survey to collect the comments from the communities and also from the public. And we have not published any community workshoping, uh, workshop slides on the website. And where is the transparency here? I don't find any supporting documents to support the city council's decision to select simply. So that's not number two. So number three, contacting the due diligence, talking about the due diligence for the city government, talking about the bidding window. We only opened up a one month bidding window to select the bidders. And we're talking about a $500 million project. I can't even select a vendor to build my bathroom 
within 30 days. <laughs> How can you do a 500 million project within 30 days? That's not reasonable. That's not due diligence. That's totally out of the, out of the imagination. So that's number three. And number four is what is the evaluation criteria? I searched the Simpoli website. They are professional developers. They develop a bunch of few Marriott hotels in Chicago, in Houston, and so on and so forth. But they have zero experience dealing with toxic landfill. We're not here opposing any kind of development. We are opposing non-safe development. And this project is non-safe because you know, the Simpoli doesn't have any experience at all. So what is the criteria that you guys choose Simpoli? Please publish that. Let us take a look at that. So the number five thing is actually did an evaluation of the economy of the hotel. So based on the range of, uh, of hotel rates, it has to be roughly, I should provide you that sheet over there, it has to be maintaining a 95% of residence rate for at least $188 per night to break even their cost, to pay off their equity cost, to pay off their debt. We're not talking uh, about- Please, your, your time is up. A time, yeah, give me one, the five minutes, five seconds. So it's five not going to, yeah, it's not going to generate any sales revenue for the, for the city. And this developer is counting on the depreciation to maintain the value, uh, maintain this project. Okay. So it's not going to contribute okay. as what we okay. want okay, thank in this you. project. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council, City staff, members of the audience. I'm Frederick Sykes. I have lived in West Covina for 41 years. I'm also the former mayor of this city. First, uh, regarding tomorrow night, there's an event, it's a fundraiser. It's the 49th uh, Land on the Town for the Lions Club. It will be held at uh, 6 p.m. at the Lakes Movie Theaters. We ask everyone to please come out. Uh, $25 uh, will get you uh, a ticket. $16 of that uh, donation is a tax uh, deductible. And um, with that also comes uh, lots of food, a movie ticket, and we also have uh, over 15 participating restaurants, and um, there's also a DJ and uh, silent auction, also live entertainment. There's more information at westcovinaalliansclub.com. We kind of handicapped with uh, three minute speaking time period. However, there are a lot of us here tonight, and before I got up, people made some profound and powerful statements. It was loud and clear that the majority of the city, especially ones that are here tonight, took time from their families to come out and tell you, please do not do this. It was brought up earlier about what happened to uh, our community. Because see, I live in uh, the south side of that dump and um, I'm surrounded. Uh, my community is surrounded by, we live in the valley of dumps. We have uh, the um, uh, industry landfill, which is now, uh, Industry Hills Complex on the west. Uh, to the east, we have um, the uh, Spadra, a former dump, which is just uh, east of uh, Grand on Valley. And then, of course, we're framed at the north end uh, by the BKK. <clears throat> it was mentioned about 1985 and the south side of that dump. You had 19 single family homes uh, that were evacuated due to poisonous gas leaking into the community. That gas is still there. That same year, the EPA declared BKK as one of the most dangerous dumps in the United States. As a matter of fact, it is so dangerous that we have eight different oversight agencies, a regulatory agencies such as U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, U.S. Army of Corps of Engineers, U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife Service, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, California Department of Toxic Substance Control, California Department of Resources Recycling and Recovery, South Coast Air Quality Management District, and the uh, LA Regional Water Quality Control. That should tell you enough right there not to do it. Furthermore, we ask to protect the wildlife, about 10 seconds. Uh, we have to ask you to, to protect the wildlife and health uh, of humans and the environment 
Uh, and so please uh, do not uh, uh, prove anything that's, that's going to do more than just minimum uh, disturbance of the land that's there. And then furthermore, you drive around this city and you know that almost every piece of land here is covered by cement and asphalt. So we ask you, BKK should be preserved as open space for future generations. Thank you. Jerry Potras, longtime resident. I'd like to echo the concerns. The residents before me have spoke on their concerns on this. I've worked in the public sector. I've never seen a more flawed process in my 40 years. And I have worked with processes. This is flawed. The fact that in January we had two meetings for the community and we weren't allowed to discuss part of this development, we're told in the future. Well, the future's not, not arriving. The residents that did make comments, as people before me said, did not, they wanted more open space. They don't want massive development. We don't want our quality of life compromised by, by excess traffic. It's our city. You're elected to represent us. I don't actually understand, and I don't think a lot of residents understand, because the council has never done a good job of explaining why we need a hotel in the first place, other than we're supposed to get some tax revenue. I strongly urge the council to stop, start dealing with the residents' concerns, and develop a consensus one way or another. You're listening, but you're not hearing. If we have to have a mall, a hotel, the better place is at the mall. If it fails, it can be turned into apartments or condos relatively easy. It's a traffic area. It's an area that's being looked at for other things. But the hotel at the dump is not a good idea. Thank you. After Suzanne Pickering, I'd like to call up Minerva Avila, Robert Andalon, followed by David Bond, if he wishes to speak. City Council, my name is Suzanne Pickering, and I'm a 54-year resident of West Covina, and I hope I stay here for the rest of my life, and I hope it's a long life, but I'm starting to have some worries because, um, you know, you're the City Council. And as such, the very least that residents can ask of you is to take care of our health and welfare and not unleash poisons. And that, that's the only thing I can see happening with, with this development. Those of us with long memories recall, and not so long memories, recall noxious smells, toxic substances, um, flaring up of asthma and worse, and it only promises to get worse. It's not going to get better with, with this project. So why do it? It sounds like a lot of people are wondering that. And um, yeah, so uh, why do it when there's, there are choices that really do seem to serve the health and welfare of, of the residents? We don't need a hotel. Um, and what was the rush? The, these, these topics have been covered. Why the secrecy? Why are you doing this? Um, it's distressing to see the council move in lockstep. I'm impervious to the wishes of the constitu their constituents. And um, I can't help but look back on previous, I don't know, you know how long all of you guys have lived here, but you know the history and previous disasters, disastrous council decisions that have left the city in debt and um, yeah, the way it is. Please reflect on the will of the people and consider this, reconsider this potentially disastrous move. Don't miss this opportunity to create a bright future for our, our young people and my health and my old age. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm here to voice my opposition to the Singpoli development. 
and I have to say it is incredibly difficult to address you with respect. It is incredibly difficult to address you with respect given that you have been completely disrespectful to the residents of the city. What gives you the right to have respect when you don't uh, give it back to the residents? I'm here to make the case as to why you should not approve the Singpoli development. And while I'm here hoping that you will truly listen to what residents have to say, fortunately, I'm not as optimistic as others, I don't trust one bit that you will have an open mind. Um, Mr. Wu is already bragging to people that the venue will host a Coachella-like concert. I believe that's what you promised uh, last night at the um, uh, Youth please, Council. Please you, address uh, the chair, yes, very please, thank yes, you. Yes, okay. I believe that's what uh, Sheriff Wu uh, promised at the Youth Council banquet last night, a Coachella-like concert in addition to everything that he was bragging about. Um, so you haven't officially voted on the development and you're already making promises. Is it that evident that you've already directed council members Lopez and Castellanos on how to vote? You know you have it in the bag already. And you are that you are really that blatant. It's kind of criminal, no? Another violation of the Brown Act? Perhaps. The Singpoli development has, not, has been forced upon the residents through deception from the very beginning. In November 2017, Singpoli presented its proposal, its proposal to the city council. At no time during that development, during that stage, of, uh, were residents asked to provide input. So Singpoli, thank you, but no thank you. You did not earn our trust. And, you know, we were asked to, to, to be respectful and people over there are rolling eyes, so it's, it's kind of disrespectful as well. Instead of pushing for transparency and inviting residents to provide input, the City Council approved an exclusive negotiation, negotiation agreement with Singpoli. This was a month later. Some of you were not there when it happened. Two of you were. Why allow these secret negotiations? Why not get public input? Um, I believe Mr. Wu is the, the leader pushing the Singpoli development. And I would say thank you, Mr. Wu, but no thank you. You did not earn our trust. On January 30th, my family and I attend, of this year, my family and I attended the city workshop at the Cortez, city, um, Cortez Senior Center. It was a packed session. Um, some of you were there. A representative from Singpoli was also there. I believe Mr. Wu was there. If there was one thing that the residents agreed on that session, it was that we did not want a hotel. We disapproved of the 200-room hotel. How many more seconds do you need? Um, just a little bit. I'll give, you, I'll give you 15 seconds. That's it. Soon after, we heard that Singpoli was listening to the residents, and it came back with a 400-room hotel. How is that listening to the residents? Mr. Wu and Singpoli, thank you, but no thank you. You did not earn our trust. So the only thing I trust is the fact that you are totally untrustworthy. The health and welfare uh, uh, of the uh, residents of West Covina are not a priority I'm for sorry, you. Do, you up, do, not under, do you not understand the hazardous waste can do to children? Do you have please, the best interest of children, please. seniors, You're adults, done. or even animals? Some of you try Your to appease residents by calmly stating that environmental impact report will assure that the development will not pose a danger to residents. Are you opposed? Are, you, are we supposed to trust you on that? Thank you, but no thank you. You have not earned the trust. On the contrary, you have earned our no, mistrust. Please. It's clear I that legal... It's not being recorded. Okay, well, I don't need it. It's no, clear James, legal action please. will be the only please. means for you to She's stop. done. Thank you. Council members, you my name is Mike. There you go. Good. There you go, sir. Council members, my name is David Bond. I'm also here in opposition of the Singapore BKK project, as dozens of us are, dozens of us who represent thousands of the community. You are representatives. Of our community, you were elected to represent the will of the people, and unfortunately, you guys are not doing that. We know that there's 
decades of toxic waste in that landfill. There are dozens and dozens, hundreds of different types of toxins in there. One I'll speak on, arsenic. Arsenic, and there's already been evidence of arsenic spreading from that toxic landfill. You guys are planning to allow for development that will drill in to that landfill and release more of that arsenic. Arsenic leads to heart disease, liver failure, cancer, and death. So even though the community has voted for you and you're supposed to represent the community, you are actually representing a Chinese billionaire in the Singpoli Development Group to help spread disease, liver failure, cancer, and death to our children. You've surveyed the people of West Covina. A approximately two-thirds of the people of West Covina said, do not approve this project. However, you continue. Have you no shame? Do you not represent the community or do you represent Chinese billionaires? Please don't use, please don't use race on it. Because you can say simply, don't say they're Chinese or Chinese. Don't, don't use that. That's the main you, funding. That, that's please, the main funding source. Please, I, please. I don't mean it, I don't mean it racist at all. But say simply. All right. You stay there and it's out. Okay, please, if please say some funding, funding, if you like. Don't use the race. Thank you. Okay, let's go. So why, so why, why, why is two-thirds, why have two-thirds of the community disapproved this development, yet the council here, who's supposed to rep represent them, railroad this through? Through secrecy, through, through very fast action, and it's a completely unfair scenario where you elected to just go and try to acquire as much wealth as possible? Or were you elected to represent the people of West Covina? Please think about that when you go to sleep tonight. You have dozens of us who represent thousands in your community, and you're killing their children by this. Thank you. Robert Andalon, followed by James Toma followed by Mansfield Collins, followed by Donald Quick. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Robert Andalon. I've lived in West Covina since 1992. Um, I've seen a lot of the changes that have occurred over time. Uh, this is a change that I'm not really in favor of. Uh, quite honestly, because of the proposal, I, I think you're exposing the city to greater liability. Once they start digging up that toxic waste, all the companies that are on the hook now to, to remediate that will probably go to court and find a way to get out of it, and the city and the Simpoli will then be responsible for any toxic waste remediation. I don't know what that's gonna cost. I don't know how many people will be hurt because of the health issues, but I think it's imprudent and reasonable that you guys take a step back, think about what you're doing. I know there's a financial crisis within the city of West Covina, but I think there's other ways to deal with the financial crisis rather than, than, than anticipate revenue in seven to 10 years from this project. So I ask you to reconsider your decision. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor and Council. James Toma, former councilman. Uh, I've spoken before on this issue, and you know, I oppose the closed session negotiations, and I'm opposed to the BKK Landfill Hotel. And I want to remind you that this is something that you don't need to do. You don't need to impose this development over the objections of the community. You don't need to approve construction, which will involve digging up dirt on contaminated land next to a toxic landfill and next to numerous residences. You don't need to approve a development prohibited by city zoning and by a number of state regulatory agencies. You don't need to approve a hotel when the city's expert found future demand for only 135 rooms, not 400, and especially when Starwood already wants to build a hotel at the mall. You don't need to believe what a developer says it will build when the story keeps changing. First, it was an amusement park, then it was downtown Disney, then a horse training facility, and now the landfill hotel. You don't need to destroy natural habitat for various wildlife species, including deer, rabbits, and various bird species. 
You don't need to take away a perfect space for a regional natural park, a real public park, not what a developer calls a park when it owns it as private property. You don't need to pave over native California vegetation with concrete, metal, and parking structures. You don't need to impose traffic, noise, and congestion on residents who want peace and quiet. And especially, you don't need to diminish our quality of life. You don't need to do any of those things, but that's the course you're on right now. The choice is still yours. Make that choice wisely. Good evening. My name is Mansfield Collins, and um, I, am a, I am a 31 year resident of Walnut. Um, I see that there are a number of Walnut residents here, and I'm also a founding member of an organization called United Walnut Taxpayers. Uh, we had a similar um, uh, issue uh, a couple of years ago uh, involving Mount Sac, and it involves some of the same issues that have come up in this meeting. Uh, quality of life, uh, the growth of Mount Sac and how it would affect the quality of life. Traffic issues, most of the intersections around this city now have a D to F traffic rating. When you have that kind of health and safety and traffic and quality of life issues, um, many of us in Walnut are wondering why West Covina at this time would basically play Russian roulette with uh, the future of its residents as well as the cumulative impact that will be felt by the, the, your neighbors, uh, your neighbors to the east, to the west, to the south. You cannot rely on data that's collected today regarding the science or the ge geology or the reports that you're receiving, and I'll tell you why. We had the same issue when we had a, our, our issues with Mount, Mount Sac. They hired a geologist that told us that certain conditions existed on land which is known as the West Parcel. On our own, we hired our own geologist. And guess what we found out? That the geology that Mount Sac paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for, the same way that the city is going to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for your geology, was flawed. It was so flawed that we discovered that the area that they wanted to build a solar panel farm on had a high risk landslide that had been indicated and, and determined by the county for over 40 years, but it was overlooked by this geologist. There is so much to be overlooked in a toxic dump site. I, I remember 31 years ago, I remember the headlines of the LA Times about BKK. I just don't think that it's wise as elected officials to play Russian roulette. You're not forced to do this. You're actually gambling by making this decision. You can't guarantee that something isn't going to come out of that earth that is going to affect the quality of life or the health and safety of some of your, your, your residents, your young residents and your elderly residents. And also, you're going to, it's not going to be limited to West Covina. One last point. We ultimately had to hire our own attorney. Eventually, the city of Walnut sided with us, but we had to hire our own attorney. Uh, we succeeded in getting a temporary restraining order. We then succeeded in getting a preliminary injunction. Ultimately, we, we won our case. And guess what? Even though we paid for our attorney up front, the judge awarded our attorney a million dollars in legal fees. Mount Sac had to pay that. You don't play Russian roulette with quality of life as well as your finances in the city of Escovina. Next speaker is Donald Quick, followed by Greg Fitchell. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Followed by John Shoemaker. Good evening. I'm here to oppose the St. Pauli development at BKK. I have kids. This is not in their interest. I'm a school teacher, Rosemead High School. And I can tell you, uh, my students would know not to approve this. I 
we talk about applying something called the precautionary principle. Precautionary principle says that you err on the side of caution. You err on the side of being safer and doing what's right for the people. The thinking behind this proposal is short-term thinking. In the long run, it's a bad decision, not only for the environment, not only for all of us, but also financially. Not only is it a bad decision, the process by which the decision has been made, has been a bad process, undemocratic process, overly hasty. Please oppose this development for the sake of all of us, for the sake of democracy in our community, for the sake of our children, for the sake of the long-term economic well-being of our community. Thank you. Hello, my name is Greg Fritchell, and uh, I grew up here in West Covina. I now live uh, next door in the city of Walnut, uh, along with my uh, uh, colleague, Mr. Man uh, Collins. Um, and I, uh, I also uh, was a former candidate for the State Assembly in the 55th District, which includes the southeastern part of West Covina. Um, so needless to say, I've been paying close attention to, the, to all of the effects of and all the proposals that have surrounded uh, the BKK landfill, not only now but in the past. Um, actually, uh, in the city of Walnut, we already know, uh, first off, that, um, that the, the barriers that were supposed to enclose the toxic um, substances underground in the BKK landfill have, were compromised a long time ago and those substances have been leaching into the groundwater and that has been flowing south in a southeasterly direction into the city wall and into the southeastern part of West Covina. Um, it's not just a concern though about the groundwater, it's also a concern about potential release of toxic gases into the air from the ground and to give you a little perspective on that uh, several years ago, when the city of Walnut was proposing a housing development now known as Three Oaks, north of Amar Road and east of the BKK landfill, a couple of miles east of the BKK landfill, um, it, uh, there actually was evidence found at that time, before there was even any excavation done, that there were toxic gases being released into the atmosphere, including hydrogen sulfide which is known to be toxic, actually I should say lethal in even small amounts. There was enough concern about that, that before they uh, began the development, they had to install monitoring wells so that they could ensure that there was not an excess amount of gas being released and potentially posing a health hazard. If it's that much of a hazard to, if what we've already done is pose that much of a hazard, not only to West Covina, but to surrounding communities, what kind of risk can we expect from this when we're building right, basically right on top of it and on unstable ground uh, to boot? So, um, yeah, I, I think this is a concern that not only West Covina residents should have, but anybody in the area should have. Thank you. Get out the booing. One, this isn't being built on the toxic landfill, period. End of discussion, okay? Two, I can see the James Toma administration that, that was voted out of office is trying to make a comeback. When I hear that we ought to spend $20 million for a 10 by 150 foot piece of grass called the Glendora Project. Three, in the last election, since people are saying you need to listen to the public, 
In the last election, there was a district in elections in District 2, District 4, and District 5. In District 2, the two top vote getters and the winner both said they supported development at BKK. District 4, there was a person who said they supported development at BKK, and they beat the person who said, I don't want the development at BKK. <laughs> then in District 5, we have the master that everybody says is pulling the strings, who ran around District 5 and says, I want to build this hotel. He came up with the most grandiose plans that he wanted to put there. He won. He won. So if you're representing the people and you say, I want to develop, I want to develop, and I want to develop, and you win, aren't you representing the people? It's that simple. So what they're saying here is, oh, well, two-thirds of the people surveyed. It was 100 people. And they were brought out by the people who don't want the building up there. I kind of look at the number of people, whether I like it or not, who, when you run, saying this is what I'm going to do, and you do it, and you get elected, kind of tells me the people are saying, yeah, I like your idea. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So, yes, you might be ignoring 100 people. You know, but uh, how many votes did you get? You know, and you take it one step farther if you want to talk about votes. You know, uh, how many people voted, and how many people basically sat down and go, I really don't care what you do. You know, that's how impressed they were about it in general. Go do whatever you want, which was probably the majority of the voters because not a majority of people came out to vote. So keep going because there's a lot of things that is going to happen before you have one thing built up there. So we'll take it from there. Thank you. Yeah. We don't want to let facts and the truth get in the way. Thank you. We have two additional speaker cards, Fabiola Wong, followed by Angie Gillingham. Good evening, Fabiola Wong. I'm here also to oppose St. Pauli, nothing new. As you know, um, the, there's a reason why the site hasn't been developed, uh, and either other sites around it, like the Home Depot that has been developed, has monitoring for meth methane, and there's a reason why, and they were not even part of the BKK site. Uh, the site is highly contaminated. <clears throat> and in all honesty, um, to clear any environmental, um, any environmental um, issues from other agencies like DTSC is gonna be a hurdle. And I'm here to tell you, I'm gonna be reading all the materials that come out we want to make sure that um, that it doesn't get developed because really it it shouldn't be. Uh, all the facts are there. If you could have it developed, it would have been developed by now. There's a reason why it's still vacant, and the own city's assessor's um, appraisal said that it's worth about six million dollars. Why? Why do you think that is? Because just the clearing of the site, the contamination that's there, it's not worth it. So in reality, I don't think it's ever going to happen because it's going to take decades to clear all the environmental issues at the site. You guys will be all way gone. We, you won't be elected and you won't be here to make those decisions. You can smile. Watch my words. Thank you. Hello. I bring with me 125 signatures of residents who, who've lived in our city from one year to 60 years, who could not be here, but do not support your decision on moving forward with the BKK development, specifically Simpoli. Everyone wanted to be heard on this subject, but they were not given the opportunity. So I leave you with these opposing letters as you enter into what many of us feel will leave our city forever marred by your decision. 
I would like to ask the residents that are stand or sitting in the audience who do not or will not speak to stand right now to show this council they do oppose the this decision. Thank you. Here's the signatures. Thank you. That was our last speaker. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, would you like to give any comment about anything that was said tonight? Um, I, I, I do want to let the, I think it may be helpful to let the public know what has and has not been decided and what the next steps in this process are. Um, I think that may be helpful so that everybody's on the same page. Um, what, what has not happened is the City Council has not approved development at BKK, or B, um, they have not sold the land to BKK. Uh, uh, at BKK, excuse me. Um, what the City Council did previously is the City Council authorized staff to negotiate a letter of intent um, with Singpoli. And if that letter of intent is adopted, it's still in draft form, uh, if that is adopted, that would set forth the procedures by which the City Council and the public could consider whether to approve the sale of the property and whether to approve the development of the property. Nothing has yet been finalized. So certainly, is the city council open to the idea of development? Yes. Has the city council committed to the idea of development? No. So it's exploring that option and selected Singpoli as the, the group that the city council believed had a reasonable offer and might be willing to entertain. So what um, the next steps, there are a myriad of next steps. There will be a great number of opportunities for the public to have input and for the city council to hear from the public what the public believes. And so that ultimately, I think everybody in this room wants what's best for the public. And there will be plenty of opportunities for that to occur uh, at minimum. Uh, there are a number of steps that would need to take. Number one, uh, I'm just highlighting a few so you're aware. The, it, there would be an environmental impact report that would need to be prepared. That would be paid for by Singpoli. It would be controlled by the city. The city would hire the consultant. It would be paid for by Singpoli, but the city hires the consultant, directs the consultant, is in charge of the entire env environmental impact process. Part of that process uh, would involve community input. There would be multiple opportunities for the city to hear from the public. The environmental impact report would analyze any number of things, biological impacts, traffic impacts, air impacts, public safety, geology, a whole host of items. There would be community workshops, opportunity for community input, uh, comments, response to comments. It's a long process. Uh, Additionally, there would be uh, hearings, assuming the city decided to continue this process. Then you would have, presumably at some point in the future, hearings before the Planning Commission, in which they would consider whether to approve the EIR and recommend it to the City Council. They would then make a recommendation to the, to the City Council. The city, there would be a public hearing at the Planning Commission, and then the City Council would have planning. It would, there would be public hearings there as well. So as you can see, this is a very long process and this is the start of the process rather than the, than the end of the process. Um, once the letter of intent is finalized, assuming it is finalized, then that document would be available for public review and that would explain to the public what the anticipated next steps would be. And the city is not committed to anything. It's simply exploring options at this point. And that's the path that we're going. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now we should move to our consent calendar. Clark, what? Okay, we should move to our consent calendar. Uh, if uh, those would like to leave because of this item, you're more than welcome to. We'll take a real recess. If not, we're going to move right on through. We'll take a, we'll a five-minute recess and then move. I will be calling the meeting back to order. Please be quiet. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now we shall move to our consent calendar.
Okay. Our consent calendar, I have asked for item number 10 to be polled for clarification, and that's the only one. Uh, do we have a, uh, a motion to accept the rest of them? I'm going to make the motion to approve the rest. Right. I'll second. We have a motion and second. May we have a roll call, please? Councilman Castellanos? Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Viado? Aye. Councilmember Shoemaker? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Wu? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Uh, may I have a, uh, who, who wants a, a brief report, please, on number 10? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Agenda item 10 on tonight's agenda asked that the City Council consider award of bid for maintenance of the heating, ventilating, and air conditioning equipment that the City owns. Um, one point I wanted to make, it's perhaps made subtly in the staff report, is in, in the very near future, the city will be um, reviewing HVAC in the context of a citywide energy utilization analysis. We're going to issue an RFP and ask firms to bid on that scope of work. And there may be money through energy savings that could provide a way forward to help us with the maintenance and replacement of some of the measures, some of the roofs, some of the equipment that the city um, needs to tend. This item tonight was um, competitively bid, and we're, we are happy to review that for you tonight. We um, issued an RFP and got back two bids. The second bidder um, misunderstood the scope of work and withdrew their bid, and so tonight we're recommending that you approve this to the um, firm that's, that's Allison Mechanical Incorporated in the amount of $128,000. And we're available for any questions. Uh, is there any questions? If not, I'd like to make a motion to pass. Second. We have a motion and a second. We have a roll call, please. Prior to me taking that roll call, I would like to read into the record item number six. Ordinance number 2455, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of West Covina of California, approving zone change number 1901 to change the zoning for the property at 1404 West Pacific Lane from single family residential R1 to multiple family 20 MF20. I'm sorry, number six. Number six that we've already approved. I'd like to read that into the record. And then for item number 10, I would like to call roll. Councilman Castellanos? Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Viado? Aye. Councilmember Shoemaker? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Wu? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Passes five zero. And that is the end of the consent calendar. Now we should move to public hearings. Uh, the matter is set, uh, this is number 11. The matter is set for public hearing consists of an amendment to chapter 26 of the West Covina Municipal Code related to small recycling facilities. Will the city clerk verify proper legal notice has been given? I verify that. Uh, uh, the public, this public hearing will now be open for the code amendment number 19-1. There will be first be a presentation by the staff, and we shall hear from those in favor of the project and those who are opposed. Uh, Mr. City Manager, who will present the staff report. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Tonight, um, on the recommendation of the Planning Commission, you're being asked to make an amendment to the zoning um, ordinance. That, that it'd be a text amendment, and we're going to ask the director to provide a staff report. Thank you. So this is a code amendment 1901 for small recycling facilities. On January 10th, 2019, received a re the city received a written request from Replanet with a representative of Paige Gosney for a site at 1025 East Amar Road to um, consider a code amendment. On February 12, 2019, the Planning Commission initiated that code amendment for, the, for small recycling facilities. And on March 12, 2019, the Planning Commission held a study session to discuss the issues and gave direction to staff to prepare a, a amendment. And on April 9, 2019, the Planning Commission held a public hearing. This is a map of sites in the city that have I should say sites in the city. This site's in the area that where uh, recycling facilities are located. Um, you'll notice that 
there, there are quite a few, but there's only two that are in West Covina, this being one, which is at uh, Francisquito and Sunset, and then this being the one that we're talking about at 1025 East Amar, which is in front of the Stater Brothers uh, store at the shopping center on that corner. Uh, the, the rest of those are, are not located within the city of West Covina. So we only have two currently in the city of West Covina. And the applicant, Mr. Gosney, is here tonight and can, to describe, can describe to you the requirements that are on s grocery stores to have recycling centers nearby and what, what, uh, what they have to go through in, in those scenarios. So this is to show that it was 1025 East Amar, which is on the very southwestern corner of the city that, where the proposal is at. This is a, a aerial of that shopping center. This is the Stater Brothers. Uh, this is Valinda. This is Amar. These are the boundaries of the city. These are actually uh, not in the city and in unincorporated areas, but these houses on the north and the east are in the city of West Covina. And the current standard, so we have a current code for small recycling centers that requires a 250-foot separation between residential uses and facilities. Now the problem in this center is because it is completely surrounded by residential on all four sides. There is nowhere on the site that you can be 250 feet away from residential uh, in, on all four, on all four, in all four directions. So their, their location they have been at is in this location and they have been there a while. They did stop getting a business license and so therefore their, their approvals went defunct or void so they had to now apply to do this, and this is the reason they're before us with a uh, code amendment. So this is the issue. They, they needed to be 250 feet away, and they, they couldn't do it in that center. So the Planning Commission reviewed that situation, reviewed other uh, shopping centers in the city. You know, this, this shopping center is, is a bit unusual in that sense, that it's completely surrounded by residential uses. Most of our shopping centers, if you think about them, are maybe back up against residential, but they're on the uh, north and south and across the street or on either side of it and across the street, there are uh, commercial uses. So this is a, it's a pretty unusual circumstance in the city of West Covina. So after studying that, the Planning Commission recommended two changes to the Municipal Code. And these, the, what you see on the screen is, is a markup of what, what Municipal Code used to say and what, it, what we're proposing that it say now. The cross out is what it used to say, the under, underscore and bold is what it, it's proposed to say. So it would continue to say facilities have to have a minimum distance of 250 feet from residential uses, but it has an exception that says this minimum distance requirement does not need to be met if the facility is at least 150 feet from the site zoned or occupied for residential use and is separated from that site by an arterial street. So arterial streets are generally four, four lanes, sometimes uh, five, and that's in, in, in a neighborhood street is two lanes. So that's one of the differences there. It's a, generally, when you have an arterial street, it's a very busy street, such as a Cameron, West Covina Parkway, Azusa, Sunset. Those, those are arterial streets, Amar and uh, Valinda in this case. Secondarily, to change it to reduce the overall size of the market. So we put in, this was put in the code some time ago with probably without much research on what, how big some of the grocery stores or markets in the city are. Um, so we had it in there that they had to be a minimum of 30,000 square feet. Well, this, this Stater Brothers is not 30,000 square feet. So it's, it's under that size, so we're recommending that it be reduced to 25,000 square feet. So those are the two changes. The two changes, only those two changes would be recommended. If those are approved, then replant it, can then propose an administrative use permit to go, I'll go backwards for a second, to, to locate in this site. If, they, if those are not approved, they cannot have that location in that site. They'll have to shut down, which will cause some, some difficulties for some of the grocery stores who are required to provide recycling centers as, as part of state law. On April 9, 2019, the Planning Commission held a public hearing, um, and at that time they, did, they were reviewing a code amendment that would amend municipal code in the, way, the ways we've discussed, reduce the separation requirement between residential uses and recycling centers from 250 feet to 150 feet when an arterial street separates them and reduce the minimum market size threshold from 30,000 to 25,000 square feet. After the discussion, the, the commission voted three to one with one person absent to recommend approval to the city council. So the recommendation tonight is the planning commission is recommending that the city council adopt 
Code Amendment number 1901 to modify the standards for small recycling facilities. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Is there any questions on the council or the staff? Seeing none, thank you, Jeff. Uh, at this time, is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the project? We received one email letter in support by Kathy Lucker, uh, and this evening we're going to have Speaker Paige Gosney come forward. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, my name is Paige Gosney. I'm an attorney representing uh, Replanet. I've represented them for 10, 11, 12 years now. Um, they are, as I, I think, uh, the letter that was sent to you earlier this, uh, this afternoon, copies of which I do have as well. I know sometimes it's difficult for late emails and letters to get delivered and make it into your hands. You do have it, great. Um, as the letter, I think, explains, Replanted is the largest provider of uh, recycling beverage container recycling services in, in California. Uh, AB 2020 is the, uh, the, the so-called bottle bill, which essentially established a mandate for supermarkets in California to provide um, beverage container recycling services to make those services convenient, economic, and efficient. And the way that they did that was to, a lot of the time, contract with companies like Replanet to place sites within the parking lot of, of supermarkets uh, so that residents theoretically could come in, collect their recyclables, deposit them, get their CRV, which then presumably they can go back into the market and reinvest buying groceries or buying, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, this particular Replanet is, I think, uh, Mr. Anderson explained, um, you know, has been here for 16 years. It was private, previously an Earthwise uh, recycling center, I believe. Uh, Replanet acquired a number of different smaller recycling centers over the years and took over operations, put their um, Replanet centers, you know, in their place and continued operations. Uh, this was one of those centers. Uh, it's my understanding Earthwise didn't have the business license at the time that they acquired it. It was Replanet's understanding. They had the permit, they had the approvals when the city brought it to our attention that uh, we didn't have that business license, we didn't have those approvals. We immediately sat down with, with the planning staff and, and discussed what we would need to do to come into compliance. And then, you know, obviously that began the process of how we're here today, why we're here today. And, and uh, you know, to that end, I, I wanna thank planning staff and, and planning commissioners. I know Commissioner Redholz is here. Uh, we, we had a number of hearings before the commission. We've had a number of meetings with planning staff. We've discussed this extensively. I think the staff report lays out uh, very, well, very well, very clearly, very concisely what it is that we're requesting uh, as part of this amendment um, and appreciate your consideration of it tonight. Uh, I think the language that we're proposing, not only would it allow Replanet to continue operating at this site as it's been doing for, for 16 years uh, and been doing without complaint, without interference, without issue, um, you know, recycling centers can be lightning rods for a number of different things, and this particular center has has not uh, has been there serving the residents of the local community, including Commissioner Redholz, uh, who lives in the area, um, you know, for for 16 years, and we want to continue doing that. We want to continue doing that in compliance with the code, and and that's the process that that we're pursuing um, today. The the impacts, are, I think, what's important about the the proposed language in particular is that it doesn't reduce or eliminate any of the city's and the planning director's authority to uh, regulate or to consider um, future administrative use permits for small recycling centers. Um, they still have the discretion, essentially, where when you've got a unique site like ours, where it's separated by an arterial road, to to carve out an exception for that for a particular center that meets those criteria. And you know, in this case, a center that again is operated for so long without complaint, it would seem to make sense that that they continue, you know, to be able to do that. The other, uh, you know, component obviously is the reduction from 30,000 square feet to 25,000. I think Mr. Anderson explained it very well. The intent was to prohibit, you know, Bob's Liquor Store from, uh, from, from having a recycling center in the parking lot and keeping it at supermarkets like Staters, like others. Um, to that end, it's important to note that the Department of Conservation's certification for this particular center provides what's called an exempt status for a number of other supermarkets in the city that otherwise would be required to comply with AB 2020 and provide recycling on site. If they couldn't do that, or if they didn't do that, then they would be paying $100 a day fine. And you know, because the Amar Road site, the Replanet site, has served the residents for that community and, and for the area, these other supermarkets don't have to pay that fine, don't have to provide those services. So aside from 
if the, the proposed language is, is not approved by the council tonight, and if the administrative use permit, when we get to that point, is not ultimately approved by the city, the impacts, you know, would not just be replanted, would not just be the local residents there, it would be a number of other supermarkets, and, and it would be a significant impact for the community, and, and certainly something that we believe is contrary to AB 2020, which, you know, again, is the goal is to make recycling convenient, efficient, economic, and to do that by allowing residents to, to get their CRV. Um, I'm happy to answer. You're kind of overselling it? Okay, oh, okay. Well, we, I have a, you talk forever. I think we, you, I believe it's sold already, okay? okay. I, I don't think I have any problem to approve you, my seat. Okay, I just want to know if this facility is nice and clean and neat. Okay, that's the only thing I care. And uh, this is a needed facility for people to recycle. And no problem at all, okay? My seat, okay? I don't know my, my colleague, but you don't have to sell it, okay? I, I think this is already self-explained. We read it already. So, so, so. How, how is the facility, nice and clean and neat? Very clean. Very, Very clean? clean. Yeah. It's clean? Okay. You sure? <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to clean it, okay? So, so, so I'm fine. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm passionate about recycling. Is there any other questions? If not, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Is there anyone in uh, wants to speak in opposition? <laughs> See none. I, I shall close the hearing now. Is there any uh, council on the discussion on it? If not, uh, do we have a motion then? I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'll just echo to Tony's sentiment. That's incredibly important is for the facility to be kept clean. And throughout the years I was on the planning commission, we talked about recycling centers a few times. So I understand the need and, um, well, just keep it clean for us and we'll move forward. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Let's have. We have a motion. Move forward. I'll make a motion to. We have a second. I'll second. Oh, okay. So I believe that motion includes the yes. waiver of. Uh, read yes. By yes. Read it. Yes. Ordinance number two four six zero, the ordinance of the City Council of the City of West Covina, California, to amend subsection one of section twenty six dash six eight five. Point nine three of Chapter 26, Article 10, Division 14 of the West Covina Municipal Code relating to small recycling facilities. Councilman Castellanos? Aye. Councilwoman Lopez Viado? Aye. Councilmember Shoemaker? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Wu? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Passage 5 -0. Congratulations. Maybe you can open some more of them. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, we, we, no. And all zero. And that's, okay, that's the end of that public hearing. Uh, next, do we have any uh, mayor and council members' reports? AB 1234, it's conference report. Uh, Councilman Council Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I just got back from ICSC uh, earlier today. It was a very interesting experience. I learned how. Uh, Elected officials. I want to say welcome back. Welcome back. Thank, to, thank to you. To lessen yeah. our oral communication. Yeah, mostly on my dime, by the way, because we're broke as a city. Um, <laughs> but it was a great experience. Um, I got a good opportunity to see how elected officials interact with developers, and it was just thousands of square feet of exhibitions. Um, so it was uh, talked to some groups doing stuff in our city right now, and or who want to. So. Uh, wonderful experience, and that's all I've got to report. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I stayed in one. <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay, I know we do have one. Uh, Mother, may I, by Councilwoman, uh, please. I actually have two. The first one is um, I'd like the staff to survey the other cities and look at options to install cameras at the parking lots at the parks. And do I say my second? Oh, Can I add on to your mother, may I? Um, one of the issues I think we have with people in parks after dark is that there's not enough lighting. So can we add on cameras and lighting or, or compare with them? <laughs> Sorry, there was another, and I do agree with that, um, especially the sensor lights. Um, there was one area that I saw when you walk, the lights actually follow you. So if that, we would like to add the lighting as well. Thank you, thank you. Okay, what's your next? The second, Mother May I's, I'd like also a detailed report on the Ma Measure A funding and the park bond measure status. So if the staff can get me that detailed report, I'd greatly appreciate that. $2 million. That one, yes. 
Oh, did you have one with the mayor? Yeah. Okay, we have another member here by uh, Councilman Casamos. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I know on the plan, the Planning Commission receives a status report of uh, going projects, um, but I would like to request a little bit more details, and especially I'm curious about Chick-fil-A. I just want to see what's going on, and I'd like to see that move a little bit faster and also get a little bit more detail on and any other projects we've got going on just to see if anything's stalling them or how we can accelerate them. Pro detailed, yep, a little bit more than than we have. Thank you. Apparently we're in sync because I want to add on to Council Member Castellanos. Um, I would like to know, be, it was brought up several times, the lowered number of permits that have been issued. And so um, in addition to the projects that we currently have going on, I would like a report on what types of permits are being pulled, how long it's taking for the permits to be processed and how long it's taking for projects to be complete once this, you know, so that the projects can actually happen. So how long is it taking for city approvals through each step of the way? Okay, is there any more? If not, we make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. So be it, we're adjourned.